Okay, uh, it's seven o'clock. I'd like to call the Board of Select and meeting to order for Tuesday evening, September 15th, 2020. Begin with the following statement. This meeting is being held remotely as an alternate means of public access pursuant to an order issued by the governor of Massachusetts dated March 12th, 20 provisions. Sorry, Mary. That's okay, of the open meeting law. You are hereby advised that this meeting and all communications during this meeting may be recorded by the town of Hingham in accordance with the open meeting law. If any participant wishes to record this meeting, please notify the chair at the start of the meeting in accordance with Massachusetts General Law Chapter 30A, Section 20F, so that the chair may inform all other participants of said recording. Could I please ask that if anyone is recording the meeting, if you please identify yourself by either using the raise hand function or if you are calling in by telephone to identify yourself, please. Okay, uh, seeing none, uh, the first item of business on the board's agenda is the approval of minutes. Um, Bill and Joe, are you ready to move ahead on these minutes or uh, or not? I am, uh, this is Joe, I'm, I'm prepared. There are some very minor changes that I would just announce to make sure we're all in agreement, but otherwise I'm, I'm prepared to uh, move forward with the minutes. I'm good as well. Okay, uh, why don't we start with the minutes stated August 4th and if anyone has any um, uh, edits to propose, uh, please do so at this time. Uh, so I would have an edit, which is at the very end with the uh, section dealing with Selectman Town Administrator reports. The sentence now reads, Mr. Fisher reported that the town now owns the water company assets and asked with more details. And it should read, and ask Ms. Power to provide the board with more details. And then the next sentence flows through, Ms. Power said. So I think we just missed the words, Ms. Power to provide the board with more details. Other than that, I would move to approve the August 4, 2020 minutes as so amended. Second. Uh, any further discussion? All those in favor by roll call vote. Joe? Aye. Bill? Aye. Mary? Aye. Okay, uh, next set are the minutes of August 13th, 2020. I would make a motion to approve the minutes dated August 13th, 2020. I would, uh, before second event, I would make the following suggestion. Uh, at the very beginning of the minutes, it notes the uh, board members present would be Board of Selectmen, Ms. Mary Power Chair, Mr. Joseph Fisher, and Mr. Joe Fisher. I was there twice. And unfortunately, Bill Ramsey's name is not listed. So if we could substitute, Ma, uh, instead of Joe Fisher, we have Bill Ramsey, uh, then I would be prepared to move forward with these minutes. Okay. Any further discussion? So then I would uh, second the motion to uh, approve the minutes as so amended. Okay. Uh, all those in favor, Joe? Aye. Bill? Mary, aye. And uh, lastly, August 18th. The same correction at the very beginning. I am listed twice and my good friend, Bill Ramsey is not listed. So we could add him in. I would then make a motion to approve the minutes of August 18th as so amended. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor, Joe? Aye. Bill? Aye. Mary, aye. Okay. Uh, thank you. Uh, the next item of business on the agenda is uh, Packaging Center Inc. doing business as Stop and Shop Hingham. This is a request for a change of officers, directors, and LLC managers. And I'm told that uh, Mr. Eugene Richard uh, will be on the line uh, representing Stop and Shop. Um, Michelle, I I don't see uh, Mr. Richard's name, but I see a few telephone numbers. I, I am on, this is Gene Richard. <laughs> I, I had technical difficulties and switched from computer to uh, phone at the last minute and, uh, and couldn't figure out how to add my name rather than no. <laughs> no, no problem, welcome. Thank you for joining us. Um, 
Um, Mr. Richard, before, before I ask you for any comments, Tom or Michelle, could you just explain to the board and to the public the nature of this request? Sure, the, the applicant is asking to request the, the change of um, officers uh, for their ABC C re uh, registration and um, and I'm told by uh, Sharon Perfetti who prepares all this that everything is in order. Okay, um, and uh, Mr. Richard, before opening it up to my colleagues for questions, was there anything you wanted to add with respect to this application? Um, no, I do not, uh, although in the um, narrative that's uh, in question one on the uh, forum, uh, all, all of that is correct other than I, I would add that uh, there are going to be three directors removed. So the, the narrative mentions the uh, director being added, but um, uh, as the application notes later on, Mark McGowan, Stephen Keenzel, and Dirk Yan uh, Terhorst will be deleted. Okay, um, thank you. Thank you for that. Thank you for that clarification. Uh, Joe or Bill, any questions for uh, Tom or for Mr. Richard? Uh, this is Joe, I, I um, had just a minor question. The, uh, on the second, page of what we received, the Certificate of Good Standing, uh, refers to the Packaging Center in Carlisle, Pennsylvania. Um, I, I just didn't follow the connection between that Certificate of Good Standing and this application. Um, let me see. I think that, um, your which uh, the, the DOR certificate? It's yes. uh, that's correct. All right, the Department of Revenue certificate. Yes. Oh, um, well, the 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 uh, corporation is uh, Packaging Center Inc. Uh, it is a Massachusetts corporation, but um, I have. The Carlisle, Pennsylvania, I think, must be the um, um, address for the tax department. Okay, so so there is a there is an actual location in Carlisle as well. That's uh, an affiliate or uh, part of the company. Yes. Okay. Yes. So stop um, and shop, in other words, operates in multiple states, and um, and that tax unit must be in Carlisle. Okay, I, I had no other questions, thank you. Bill? I have no questions, thank you. Okay, uh, I, I've uh, looked everything over as well, so I think I'm set. Um, uh, is there anyone uh, uh, in the public who uh, has a question or wishes to make a comment on this agenda item? Okay, seeing none, I would accept a motion. Uh, before Barry, before we do the motion, do we need to amend the suggested language? Because the suggested language talks about it, the change of the officers. I don't see that it talks about the removal of the officers, mm -hmm. as was just pointed out. And I don't know if we need to include that in the vote, or whether it's it's not necessary. I interpreted the vote language as the roster of the existing directors. And so by default, I assume that, that those that were removed um, because, uh, uh, because they are not listed in the vote, I, I, assumed, I assumed the removal. Um, yeah, I'm fine with that as well. Okay, okay. Um, I'd accept a motion then. So I would move to approve the request of Packaging Center Inc doing business as stop and shop for a change of officers, directors, and LLC managers as follows. Gordon Reed, president, director. Mark Messier, secretary, treasurer. Stacy Lynn Wiggins, director. Robert Yeager, director. Maria Silvestri, assistant secretary, subject to the approval of the Alcoholic Beverages Control Commission. Any further discussion? 
Uh, all those in favor, Joe? Aye. Bill? Aye. Mary? Aye. Um, Mr. Richard, thank you for joining us this evening. And thank you as well. Okay, the next item of business on the agenda is um, a pledge of license and alcohol inventory uh, for AGT Inc. doing business as Queen Anne Wines and Spirits. Uh, and I understand that uh, Mr. Fano, who is on the call, is uh, representing the applicant. Is that correct? Correct. Good evening. Thank you. Welcome. Um, uh, Tom, could you maybe just give us the headlines of, of what this uh, what this request is? Sure. This is another um, uh, ABCC uh, process, Alcohol um, Beverages Control Commission process. They are uh, requesting to pledge their license uh, for their inventory to Rockland uh, Trust Company. And, um, and again, I've spoken with Sharon, and she tells me that everything is in order. Thank you. Um, Mr. Fano, before opening it up to my colleagues for questions, was there anything you wish to, to add? Great. Yeah, I would just add that, um, as you probably, as you folks probably remember, we were in earlier this year, uh, and the board approved um, the change of location for the Section 15 premises license. Um, and then subsequently, uh, AGT and Rockland Trust did it. At, um, execute this pledge and promissory note. So we're just seeking to um, an, the application for amendment to include this new pledge of collateral. Thank you. Uh, Joe, any questions? Uh, no questions. Bill? No questions. Seems straightforward. Uh, any questions from the public? Okay, seeing none, I'd accept a motion. I would. I'd be happy to make that motion. I would make a motion uh, to approve the request of AGT Incorporated, uh, DBA Queen Anne's Wine and Spirits for a pledge of license and alcohol inventory to Rockland Trust Company, subject to the approval of the Alcoholic Beverages Control Commission. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor, Joe? Aye. Bill? Aye. Mary? Aye. Terrific. Thank you. Um, Mr. Fano, thank you for being here this evening. Yeah, thank you very much. Take care. Uh, the, next, uh, the next item on the agenda is a review of the application for outdoor table service from Legal Seafoods LLC, doing business as Legal Sea Bar located at 96 Derby Street. This is a request for outside table service and modification of a liquor license um, I see that we have both representatives from uh, Legal C as well as our restaurant uh, reopening group on the line. Uh, Tom, oh, okay, I, I see Susan Murphy starting to share her screen, so I think that means I'm supposed to hand it over to Susan. <laughs> um, and then we'll uh, certainly give the applicants uh, opportunity to, uh, to comment as well. So Susan, why don't you lead us off, please? Oh, no, that's okay, Mary. I was just putting it up there so that the um, the restaurant owner um, could refer to it for their description. So I think it's it's good to start with the applicant. Okay, uh, terrific. So um, uh, I think we have uh, Ms. Schuler on the line. I think we have uh, Mr. Hayward. Uh, welcome to both of you. Uh, who'd, who'd like to lead off, please? Oh, I'll lead off. Um, thank you all very much for reviewing this again and for taking the time to go back and forth and come up with a plan that works. So um, for those that don't know, we worked closely with the restaurant group to modify Legal Sea Bar's outdoor patio. Um, as you can see, um, our architect department um, on this plan shows both the pedestrian clearance zone um, the six feet maintained around the tables into the walkway um, and the, uh, rest, the restroom circulation for the servers. The, uh, thank you, thank you, Susan. <laughs> um, the first area is an extension of their patio over in front of Talbot's, which we've um, received approval to do from Talbot's. Um, and then the second portion is uh, the new plan where we're using um, parking spaces for four four tops. This will give Legal C Bar 30 seats, which is significant um, for you know sales and um, revenue for the for the location. As you know, 
Legal only reopened in August, and so this is an integral part of their business. Um, we added uh, jersey barriers to the front for protection and then saw horses so that it's easily accessible for um, any life and safety issues. Mark, I don't know if you wanna add anything from Legal C, but this is the plan that we came up together. No, this is just a, an addition of 14 more seats that like Sherry said, would, would drastically improve our business if we are able to do this. Okay. Um, would anyone from the restaurant reopening group uh, uh, care to comment at this time? Um, Lieutenant DiNapoli, I think you're muted. There you go. Good evening. Good evening. How's everybody? Um, so yeah, this was this was quite a process trying to establish this just because of obviously everybody knows Derby Shops has a very unique parking setup with the way the spaces are and everything. Um, so after a lot of back and forth, we were able to come up with this. The only thing I would note is that that very first space, the um, Jersey Barrier would actually be moved down um, one space just to kind of block those back tables. That sawhorse would stay to block off that parking space. Uh, that was just something we had set up just to establish the safety zones and so that we had free and clear access to both Legal C as well as William Sonoma. But um, yeah, from, from our standpoint, it works out well. Um, expanded in front of Talbot's works out well and they're actually in a good position over there because as the weather starts to get cooler, they'll actually be able to do the um, outdoor heaters. I know they'd already asked about that. So we'll be able to move forward with that for them. So they should be in pretty good shape, I think. That's great, thank you. Um, Just for clarity, which, which uh, barrier should be moved, which extra Jersey barrier should be added? So- You know what? That that was the wrong. Oh wait, yeah, I was gonna say, was, is this the right plan? That was one plan ago, I think, Susan. The, the last plan. Okay. That you oh, then I have the most recent. <laughs> yeah. So Sherry, basically, be if, if that first no, yellow do, space. Me... Yeah, yeah, that Jersey barrier would just come down to the back side of those tables. Okay. That's all. Which is Great. the one that we had talked about yesterday. Okay. Yeah. 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 I have the new. I, one. Yeah, I apologize for that. For some reason, the uh, out the wrong plan got. I think, let me make sure I have the right one. I apologize. Um, oh, here we go. All right. You're showing the right one right now. I am? Yes. I don't see anything on this. Yeah. yeah. So the Jersey Berry moved from the top of the yellow to the bottom of the yellow. There's another one placed down here to protect those seatings. Can everyone see that? That's, yep. There we go. Yes. Perfect. Yep. Okay. I apologize for that. Um, is there anyone else from the restaurant reopening group who um, uh, wishes to comment? Okay, uh, Joe, any uh, questions about this application? Uh, just a couple. I'm, I'm, I'm really uh, pleased to see this. Um, I'm a fan of the Legal C uh, restaurant, so um, looking forward to the outdoor seating here. Uh, this is, I guess, a planning board question. What does the uh, taking away those parking spots, what does that do to the count of spots that are required for the Derby Street shops? We are still in compliance because Rustic Kitchen is not open. And so there's 180 seats from Rustic that are freed up. Um, and then this still keeps them under their capacity. So um, Rustic seat is, count is 193 and this will still only get them to 180. So in terms of the parking table, it doesn't impact it. And if, if Rustic, kitchen, well, I guess they're not reopening, so, um, okay. Uh, and in terms of the, um, the new tables in front of Talbot's as well as in front of Legal C, um, what is the ability of shoppers or passers-by to pass by, both in terms of uh, normal walking and, and also handicapped <coughs> access? Sure, yeah, so, um, it's on this plan, but it's very small. So there's six feet of space between the tables and the barrier for the patio. And then there's um, four and a half feet of space for that, which is the, is the yellow. So um, there's enough for money this side, plus the brick, plus the brick, but there, we didn't include that just because of the um, planters. Yep. Um, but yeah, but there's four and a half feet between the dotted line to the patio to the brick and then six feet between the table and the, and the um, patio okay. barrier. And um, how do uh, patrons who are outside uh, access the restrooms in a way that's um, COVID compliant? 
So the red dotted line shows that um, on this map. So that would be for the parking and then for the patio, it's just basically it's the same. Correct. Yeah. They would just yes, be coming in the front door of the restaurant using the same restrooms. Okay. And then, and then Chair, is this, is this other door the one being used by wait staff over they here? They use that door, correct, Mark? Um, when, when we have the fat patio open, yes, we do use that in and out for the wait staff. Yep. And um, I thought I heard, uh, I'm not sure, Sherry, if it, you mentioned that there'd be the heat lamps coming out. Yes, we were, I just wanted to know what the specifications were. So we'll, um, we can work with Lieutenant DiNapoli on, on what those are required to be, but I believe that legal would like to um, pursue getting those for this patio. Yeah. Um, would we take the same measures with, with um, our other restaurants on property as well as just work with Lieutenant DiNapoli on that? Yeah, so there's going to be, um, Joe, this is Susan. Yes. There's, as we're getting closer to this season when it's chillier out, um, there's going to be an email that goes out from the restaurant working group to all of the restaurants that have licenses kind of providing them directly with Lieutenant DiNapoli's information because he just needs to make sure that they're doing it in compliance with code. Right. Okay. We've um, already started the process of getting the permit for the heaters also. Terrific. Um, I have uh, no other questions. Thank you. Bill? Uh, first of all, I apologize for my video uh, malfunctioning this evening. I was trying to bring it back up, but it looks like I'm having an issue with my laptop. Uh, Sherry, it's good to see you again. I know we worked a lot together on the planning board, so it's good to see you in a, in a different role. Likewise. I know that there are no homeowner butters up there, but just could you go over your hours of operations? For, uh, um, yeah, so Derby Street's current hours of operation um, as of last week are Monday through Saturday, 10 a.m. to 8 p.m. and Sunday, 11 a.m. to 6 p.m., but Legal C does operate different hours. Um, Mark, what will your hours be once Currently, hours of operation every day is 12 to 9. And uh, can you just confirm how many seats you're going to put out there again? Just that here, 14? There'll be a total of 30 outside, with 30, which would give us a total of 180 completely inside and outside. Great. And um, the, outdoor, the out, outdoor dining option is going to last through what date? Uh, weather permitting? <laughs> I think it's, yeah, I Bill, think Bill, I can, I can speak to that one, Bill. Um, this is Susan. So currently the, the outside date is November 1st. Um, and there is the selectman's policy that was adopted, which me, so that was the original executive order from the governor that allowed, gave the board of selectmen this authority to grant these, um, permits through November 1st. And the selectmen needed to adopt a policy, which they did, which also had a outside date of November 1st. And all of these permits have a expiration date of November 1st. Um, I will be talking to um, Tom and Michelle, who I'm sure will be then confer with Mary as the chair about whether or not the selectmen want to take this up at a future meeting. The governor just passed a, a new executive order this week, giving um, the Board of Selectmen as the local licensing authority for liquor licenses to extend this out for the time being. It's indefinitely because it's two months beyond the um, revocation of the state of emergency. And at this point, we have no idea when the governor might lift the state of emergency. So it's going, you know, but these, they don't automatically extend the permits. The selectmen would have to revise their policy and then vote to grant extensions to all the permit holders. So it's a whole process that the selectmen will have to consider if they wish to un, you know, adopt that. So for tonight, for this license, for this permit, it's only until November 1st, um, subject to the selectmen deciding if they want to review that policy. Great, thanks for that. I got a question from that recent uh, downtown restaurant owner. Um, no, the only other thing I would just comment on is I think it's great that you're doing this. Is to echo what Joe said, I, you know, I've been eating out a lot lately, and it's wonderful for patrons to eat outside safer, and it's great to see restaurants taking advantage of um, this opportunity. So I'm fully supportive of what you're doing. Thank you. Thank you very much.
Thank you so much. We really appreciate it. Mary, can I just follow up on, with, on some of Bill's questions? Uh, sure. Um, I just want to, so Bill asked what the total number of new seats would be. Did I hear that the answer was 30? No, we that's not. Have, oh, sorry, go ahead, Sherry. No, go ahead. We currently have 16 seats existing already on the patio, so we'd be adding an additional 14. Um, so six, so that's a total of 30. Yes, would be outside. So, because I'm looking at the application, the first page, which says a net change of 40. And I didn't know what the, how, how to square the 30 with the 40. So the application, this is Susan, the application was their initial request. Oh, okay. And after a number of iterations with the restaurant working group, um, it, rested on like it landed on this plan so okay. this is the approved plan that will be referenced in the permit that gets issued to them okay and so you've just answered my next question because the application talked about displacing 16 parking spots and this is clearly displacing far fewer so that's just because that was the initial position and uh this is what what we have before us tonight is the final product that, this that's is the I recommended have. yeah this is right. the plan that's being recommended by the working okay. group Got it. Thank you. Um, and I just wanted to, um, I had some similar questions about the seating. I just wanted to confirm that there are going to be um, four tables of four in the four parking spots. Mr. Hayward, is that, is that correct? That's correct. Yep. And then, and then on the patio, it looks like there are two, four seats and then three, two tops. Correct. And that's how we get the 40. And so those tables, um, those tables won't be combined in any way at all, will they? No, nope, they'll be existing how they are on the plan. No okay. tables will be moved. Okay. Um, thank you. Um, are there uh, any members of the uh, public who um, perhaps we could take the diagram down? I'm just trying to look to see for uh, if, if members of the public, thank you very much, um, had any uh, questions about this application. Uh, okay, seeing none, uh, I would accept a motion. Um, Bill, I'll, I'll, I'll make the motion unless you'd like to do it. Go, go ahead, thanks. Okay, um, so I move that the board approve the application of Legal Seafoods LLC doing business as Legal C Bar to expand outside table service, OTS, in accordance with COVID-19 order number 35 and the Town of Hingham COVID-19 temporary policy regarding restaurant outdoor table service, the OTS policy, subject to the following conditions. A, site-specific conditions. One, the tables within the parking spaces must be enclosed by an ABCC compliant barrier, such as a bollard end chain fence parallel with the sidewalk. B, general conditions. One, outside table service shall be permitted in compliance with the approved plan. Two, the location, size, and layout of the OTS premises as defined in the OTS policy approved herein may not be modified without further approval. Any request for modification must be submitted in writing with detail as, the, as to the proposed modifications to a restaurant opening at hinghamma.gov. Three, addition of amenities such as tents or outdoor heating units is subject to further review and approval. Requests for such amenities shall be sent in writing to a restaurant opening at hinghamma.gov. Four, Approval holder shall be responsible for regular cleaning of trash and food in the OTS premises and shall not allow trash, food, or other nutrients to accumulate or be deposited intentionally or unintentionally into storm drains. Five, approval holder shall fully comply with all applicable state and local laws, regulations, and standards, including without limitation A, Town of Hingham COVID-19 temporary policy regarding restaurant outdoor table service. B, Massachusetts COVID-19 mandatory workplace safety standards. C, 
Massachusetts COVID-19 safety standards and checklist restaurants. D, ABCC advisory regarding guidelines for extension of premises to patio and outdoor areas. Six, this approval may be subject to additional public safety conditions to ensure the safety of the diners, pedestrians, and vehicles. If determined by the town that an unsafe condition exists once outside table service is in operation. And seven, the establishment may be subject to periodic inspection by com uh, for compliance with this approval. Failure to comply with this approval may result in suspension or revocation of this approval and in fines in accordance with Massachusetts law. Any further discussion? Uh, all those in favor, Joe? Aye. Bill? Aye. Mary? Aye. Um, Bill, do you want to do that second vote? Absolutely. I make a motion that the board approve the request of Legal Seafoods LLC doing business as Legal Sea Bar 96 pursuant to COVID 19 order number 35 to temporarily alter the license premises under liquor license number 00054-RS-0528 for the period commencing as of the effective date of this approval and expiring on November 1st, 2020 for operations in compliance with the aforesaid motion just adopted. And Second. Before Joe seconds that, oh. I'm, on the first line, I think Derby Street was missing. I think it's 96 Derby Street. So I just might amend that motion yep. so that we get the address in there, which I think we need. So now okay. you can second. Okay, I, as amended, I second. Okay, any further discussion? Uh, all those in favor, Joe? Aye. Bill? Aye. Mary? Aye. Uh, terrific. Uh, Mr. Hayward, Ms. Schuler, thank you both so much for being here this evening. And um, uh, Mr. Hayward, I'd echo my colleagues' comments. Um, we know that this has been a challenging time for restaurants, and we're glad that um, Legal C is actually going to be able to pick up these 30 additional seats. And um, I, I think we're all acutely aware of the fact that as, as it, the weather gets colder, the challenges for restaurants are not going to go away. And um, so as a board, I think we will be looking into, um, you know, how can we, how can we extend this because, uh, because we understand that it's going to continue to be difficult, but we, we hope the action we've taken tonight is helpful. So thank, thank you. you. Thank, thank you. you very much. Okay, uh, the next item of business is uh, the traffic committee. Uh, this is a recommendation for a stop sign at uh, the intersection of Volusia Street and Manatee Road. Um, uh, Sergeant Kilroy, uh, I think this is, uh, um, uh, are you going to take the board through this? Uh, yes, ma'am, I can do that. Okay, good evening. Um, so please evening. go ahead. Okay, um, this is uh, in relation to uh, a request from the neighbors, uh, in particular Michelle Madigan of Manatee Road, uh, regarding a stop sign installation at the end of Volusia where it meets Manatee. Uh, I will do my best here to share my screen with you guys. Uh, it might be helpful. Let's see. Hopefully this come up has come up for you. Yes. Okay. Excellent. Sorry. Okay, uh, so this has uh, come to our attention back in May and uh, we started working on this process and went out to the site, visited uh, as I was there, met with uh, several neighbors who came out and expressed their concern as well. And uh, from there, we brought it to the committee and uh, we also uh, I went out with uh, Randy from the highway department and J.R. Fry. We discussed that location, uh, did some site surveys, uh, and basically concurred that there were uh, some sight line obstructions that uh, would be able to meet the MUTCD warrant requirements. Uh, 
if uh, you can see from this position here, this is some of the documented paperwork that we had that went through the uh, committee and also the emails that were circulated. This is the requirements that were met under the MUTCD requirements. And this is one of the residents of One Stonegate, uh, the Luisi family, as I was out there, they met with them <clears throat> because the stop sign would be right at the end of their driveway. Uh, they were in favor of that. And uh, also uh, other residents did approach us several times uh, in, in asking for such sign installation. Uh, I attached a couple more pictures uh, for your perusal uh, that does indicate some of the uh, obstructed views. Uh, this view here is uh, westerly direction on Manatee. Uh, as the vehicles come around that bend, uh, if they are going slightly faster uh, than, the uh, than the 30 mile an hour limit, uh, they do come into your line of sight very quickly. Uh, the obstructions more so to your right, as you'll see next. Uh, there's a large tree here, uh, which would provide some obstructions. And then a recently installed fence. Also here is a, my, it's a kind of a short window, uh, if you will, to be looking through all of this. Uh, we were able to uh, concur that there was some site issues. Uh, lastly, there's a picture attached of the proposed sign installation. It would be uh, right at the end of uh, Volusia at Manatee. And that would be the similar how it would look, obviously I just, uh, not to scale, but that would be how it would look. And that is uh, what the conclusions we have come to. Uh, again, we think it meets the requirements and would be uh, appropriate for installation. Thank you. And, um, uh, thank you. That the packet uh, was very comprehensive, and uh, the 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 pictures were particularly um, helpful in understanding the issue and visualizing the solution. Um, Joe, any questions? Uh, yes, I have a couple. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, this this looks like a, an appropriate uh, solution to to the problems you identified. Have you heard any objections from neighbors? Anyone saying they are opposed to having that stop sign? Uh, sir, I have not uh, had some troubles here. Sorry, I have not uh, had any objections to this. Um, I did ask um, Michelle Madigan to uh, put it out to the neighborhood group. There's a neighborhood group uh, uh, on their Facebook page. I asked her to attach my information, and uh, if there were any questions, comments, concerns, to gladly uh, reach out to. Um, my email and I received none. Okay. Um, and is the speed limit, did you say it was 30 miles an hour? Uh, yes, sir. It's a thickly settled area, which would uh, indicate a 30, a 30 mile an hour speed and, zone. And that's on both of those roads? Yes, sir. And to, okay. And um, what's the history of accidents there? Uh, is it a, has it been a problem or? It has not. No, uh, we we looked back. We don't see uh, that there have been um, any issues. Um, however, we were concerned with the recent development and um, with the installation of the fences, uh, the redirection of the side of their driveway under new development, new construction. That also kind of, and then the influx of children uh, that are now into the neighborhood there uh, and accessing that, and with the walkers increasing. Uh, we just thought that this was a, uh, a safe alternative. Yep, I mean, it seems like a prudent preventative measure. Um, so mm -hmm. I, I applaud your efforts. I've got no other questions. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Bill, any questions? Uh, Dr. Good to see you again. Um, a couple questions. Um, I know that have be, having been a long time member of the traffic committee, I know that the committee sometimes, you know, there's, puts a lot of time into studying uh, issues before they um, make recommendations. Did you, did you look at the speed analysis on those roads too, or was this more of looking at the sight lines and the problems associated with the fence? Uh, good question, sir. So we did actually put the speed trailer down there as well. Yeah. Um, we, the, we did not have any, uh, you know, 
um, outliers, if you will. Uh, there was no real speed concerns. Uh, it was more or less in, in the traffic flow seemed fairly, uh, family, fairly normal. Um, it was one of those situations where, you know, people would be stopping anyway to safely approach that intersection. And now again, with the influx of delivery drivers, everything, you know, we, we couldn't rely on people uh, who live in the neighborhood to just, uh, you know, do their best to safely yield, if you will. Uh, so there was no uh, uh, revealing speed data that was uh, generated out of that. Um, but we did put the speed sign down there for a good, uh, I believe, two weeks uh, in a couple different directions just to kind of to lend the awareness. And I know that, you know, you usually go to the sites too and do your own observations of the traffic flow coming and going. Um, you said you saw a lot of children in the area or you know a lot of children in, the, in, the, in that neighborhood? Uh, that was what uh, the, uh, we personally did not view many. Uh, I went down there about three or four times. I also had a traffic um, officer in the area several times. Uh, and, you know, it, it's kind of hit or miss. Um, this was also prior to school, uh, school being in session. So, uh, you know, there wasn't an influx at the time, but I do, um, you know, rely on the, uh, the people in the neighborhood that I did speak to. Uh, they, they were pretty adamant about the influx of children at the time. And uh, I, you did a great job with the, with the sight line issues and showing how, how they're obstructing views at that, at that intersection there. So um, uh, good job as always, Sankar. I appreciate, appreciate your work. Thank you, sir. Any uh, questions from the public? or comments on this, uh, on this agenda item. Okay, uh, seeing none, I'd accept a motion. Um, I'll move that the uh, traffic rules and orders of the town of Hingham adopted by the Board of Selectmen on May 31, 1939, very recently, uh, and subsequent amend amendments thereto be and hereby are further amended as follows. Stop sign, street stopped, Volusia Road at intersection of Manatee Road in the northeasterly direction. Any further discussion? All those in favor, Joe? Aye. Bill? Aye. Mary? Aye. Uh, thank you, Sergeant. Uh, I know that we uh, also have uh, our interim police chief on the line, and I know that we do have a possible vote uh, item number. It's, it's possible vote number three on our agenda uh, and on our vote list. I just wondered if we might take that up right now uh, to sort of do these things together. So, um, Tom, could you maybe just uh, explain to the board and the public uh, the the, the vote that we're about to take? For, for the Civil Service Assessment Center? Yes. Just trying to understand. Yep, so um, uh, the chief can can probably explain a little bit better than I do, but um, we, we perform an assessment center to evaluate all of our candidates for promotion uh, within, the, within the police department. And that assessment center is designed to, to highlight uh, the best uh, candidates, the candidacies. And uh, this, the vote is designed to um, help us determine who will, uh, excuse me, to uh, determine who will help us um, administer those assessment centers. So I hope I did that justice, uh, Chief. <laughs> Anything to add? Sure, uh, can you, just wanna verify you can hear me? Yes, thank you. Okay, great. So uh, basically like uh, Mr. Mayo said, the promotional list, um, is uh, for, valid for two years, just like a, a, an entrance exam to hire a new police officer. So every two years, these lists expire and we can either take two paths. We can either uh, offer an exam through civil service where it's a multiple choice exam, or we can offer uh, this assessment center, which is, um, you know, it's basically an alternative to the traditional uh, multiple choice exam. Um, vendors are selected uh, by, you know, that are authorized by civil service to run the assessment. And they basically provide uh, realistic scenarios, um, you know, ranging issues from, uh, it might be like an employee issue, a citizen complaint, uh, public concern, uh, maybe it's a critical incident response type scenario uh, or management of that incident. Um, the 
people who are taking the assessment are rated by a, a, a panel of assessors, uh, generally retired uh, police chiefs or other administration. Um, and that is used to establish uh, a promotional uh, list, just like you'd get from a multiple choice exam. Um, so, you know, it's not necessarily, we don't have to have an opening to run this, but if, you know, if we don't hold these every two years, we won't have uh, an eligible list to promote uh, from. So. Uh, generally, this one is due to expire in November, I believe. So by the time this is approved and sent off to civil service, when we select a, a vendor to hold the assessment, um, it'll be right about that time when would uh, be due to uh, to hold another assessment for both sergeant and lieutenant. Thank you, Joe. Any questions? Yes. What are the uh, costs associated with these agreements? Uh, to run it through a uh, a vendor is. Uh, the the civil service sets the rates for the people who are taking the exam uh, right. that they pay to uh, civil service. Uh, the cost to contract with a vendor, uh, we'll contact them and get. I believe the last one, the last round, I believe was uh, between six and eight thousand, depending on the rank uh, per uh, per rank. So there's one for sergeant and a separate one for lieutenant. Uh, so there, so there's two requisitions here, one uh, number 7306 and 7307. So is so the difference is, I guess 7307 is for a lieutenant and 7306C is for the police sergeant. So 7306. Is that correct? There's, there's two separate requisitions or two separate uh, delegation agreements, one for sergeant and one for lieutenant. Um, and other than the rank, is there a difference in what actually happens here? Yeah, so basically the, the, uh, the questions and the scenarios are, are gauged to uh, the job description of, of the person who, uh, you know, who would be, uh, you'd be testing for. So uh, lieutenant's uh, promotional uh, assessment would be more geared towards a lieutenant, um, you know, where a sergeant's promotional exam would be geared more towards the job descriptions of a uh, sergeant. Right, but n I wasn't asking about the content of the questions, but more in terms of the responsibilities of, of like, are there more steps you go through with the lieutenant than with the sergeant, or is it the same process, but j different questions? Correct, same, same process, just different, different questions. Okay, uh, and what is, the, what is the term of these agreements? Is it for one year or more than one year? So the, the list is valid for two years, so okay. would, you know, so the last time we did this was in 2018, uh, was the last exams we held. Um, so I'd anticipate again that this would be two, you years. know, any list, would, yeah, it would be two years from the point that this list is established off the new exams. Yep. Um, great. Uh, thanks for staying on top of this. I've got no other questions. Thank you. Yeah, just a couple of questions, um, Chief. So, the way these assessment centers work, so are, are they oral, are they oral hypotheticals posed to applicants? Correct. So it's, they could be, um, you know, they have different things that they set up. So it could be like a, a rapid fire type question. Uh, the panel is, is, uh, is in the room with the, with the person. So the assessment panel is in the room. The, they'll give them sometimes if it's, if it's a scenario, they'll give, they'll put them in a prep room. They'll give them a the time to read over the scenario that they're going to walk into. And then they're put into the room with the assessors and they have to, you know, it's either a role play or a, or a question and answer type thing, depending on what the, uh, what that particular assessment is. Uh, how are the panels, what panel, three people, five people? I believe it's a five person. I, I could be wrong. It's between three to five, three to five. Uh, assessors per. Uh, is a panel composed of former uh, law enforcement officers? Yeah, so it's it, generally it's it's retired. The last round that we held was was um, uh, retired or active uh, chiefs, deputies, and lieutenants that ran it. Oh, so we used it before. We have yeah. So yeah. 2018, okay. we used the company and they they ran it. Uh, we held it up at Blue Cross Blue Shield uh, in their facility up there, uh, and we we ran it up in uh, in 2018 up there for both ranks. And. Um, and I imagine that the questions are posed more to the, the, um, the job or the rank that the individual's going for. Like, for example, they, the question would be posed to typical situations that a sergeant would deal with opposed to a lieutenant. Um, is, that, is that correct? 
That's correct. And also the good thing with an assessment is, is the, the vendor will come out and meet with, uh, meet with us here and the exam will actually be tailored to, uh, to Hingham. So they'll use, you know, businesses and streets in Hingham, schools in Hingham uh, when they're developing these scenarios. So they might say, you know, you go to the high school on Union, you enter through the Union Street entrance. So it's a realistic scenario that they're being presented with. Okay, and and you know, I, I think this is this is great because I've I've heard um, complaints from front of mind in law enforcement that the civil service test doesn't really um, the question of the civil service exam don't really test for the position they're looking for. They're more um, legal, legally based questions that they wouldn't really encounter in those in those day to day operations. So this sounds um, this sounds sounds good to me. So uh, thanks for, thanks for answering my questions, Chief. Appreciate it. You're welcome, sir. Thank you. And that that was also the complaints of of the uh, the people that work here as well. Is that the that multiple question standard civil service exam was just uh, you know it wasn't a realistic gauge of of what a a good sergeant lieutenant would be. And the questions were based on a textbook and how well you read that textbook, not on how well you can do the job. So. And, and, and I'm sorry. I have one this one follow up question too. Are a lot uh, are a lot of departments now moving to this model? Um, particularly those similarly situated to the town of Hingham, do you know? Yeah, sir, several have, um, you know, recently switched to the to the assessment center model. So it's becoming much more popular now. Thank you. You're welcome. Any questions from the public on this item? Okay, seeing none, I'd accept a motion. I would make a motion to authorize the chair to sign the two civil service assessment center delegation agreements between the Hingham Police Department and the Massachusetts Human Resources Division and to act as the delegation administrator under said agreements. Second. Any further discussion? Uh, all those in favor, Joe? Aye. Bill? Aye. Mary? Aye. Okay, um, thank you. Um, before we go okay. into the COVID-19 update, I do see that um, uh, Randy Sylvester has joined the meeting and um, maybe so that uh, Randy's kind enough to, to call in, but maybe we could take this item so that, uh, uh, so that we don't keep him waiting. Um, Tom or Michelle, could you please just um, uh, summarize the uh, contracts that are in front of the board uh, with regard to public works? Sure, the, uh, the superintendent has asked us to um, to sign a contract with Minuteman Truck so that we could purchase a new dump truck uh, to be used um, primarily, or not primarily, it will, it, its first main job will be to get us through this coming winter. And then of course we use it for all seasons, but uh, it's a very necessary piece of equipment that I, uh, Randy will uh, be able to properly explain its use. Um, and then also to sign a contract with, uh, with a uh, Pathfinder Tree Services to help us um, with our tree trimming needs uh, to make sure that we don't lose power on a regular basis and the like. So. Um, Randy, perhaps we could start with the, um, with the dump truck and, and maybe then take questions from my colleagues and then, and then move on to the tree service contract. Sure. Um, the dump, dump truck is uh, unit 13. Uh, we bought it in 2008. We usually get rid of the uh, change over the, uh, that size truck, the six wheel dumps, um, every 10 years, it's been deferred to two. So it's a 12 year old uh, truck. Um, it's primary, not, well, like I, Tom said, it's not its primary function, but it has, uh, it's one of our eight main trucks that does the, the roots, um, snow plow roots and sanding roots. And the salt has taken its toll on the undercarriage and it's starting to rot out. Um, we like to get we like to get the truck before the winter starts, um, and we have to call the vendor to have it ordered and made. These are just not on the shelf, but they actually have to build them from the chassis up. Um, <clears throat> some of the other functions are, are that it, you know it hauls loom, um, stone, anything that we have to haul. It's out there doing. Um, it's out there working. Uh, today, it was hauling loom from the one facility to another. Uh, we have a screener in with screening the loom to save the town money. And um, 
is uh, hauling it to our facility so we can use it on uh, roadsides. <clears throat> Thank you. Uh, Joe, any questions for Randy? Uh, I do, and Randy, just thank you. I mean, it's, you know, it's so easy to, you know, ignore, you know, these critical elements that are necessary for the town to keep functioning. So thanks for making sure that we are functioning. Uh, I appreciate it, and I know uh, everyone in the town does. Um, the, you, you mentioned that you were looking for this to arrive before the winter, is that correct? Yes. Because I'm looking at the the dump truck and I'm I'm seeing, I, I'm trying to find the delivery date, but I'm seeing in the term section it talks about by June thirtieth of twenty twenty one. Um, so it, well, that's the contract end date. Okay, it, 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 that's a contract end date. We we contract with the MAPC, and what they do is they give us a window. Yeah. So if we want to buy a vehicle, we can use that contract. Got it. So, so is there anything in here that you can use to say we want it by, you know, December 15th? Or is, is, there, is there any delivery date requirement here? It's, it, the delivery date will be dependent on uh, the manufacturer or the vendor. Yeah. We, they don't have these on the lot. They have to make them. So what we do is we purchase the chassis. We tell them what we want. Uh, the particulars, the type of sander, um, the snow plow, and then they put it together from our um, specifications. And then when it's ready, it will be delivered to our facility and we'll prep it from there. So um, is it your understanding that if we move forward with this promptly that uh, it's likely that we will receive it prior to winter? Yes, we will. Terrific. Uh, and in terms of the price, um, if, you know, a little over $164,000, is that, I know that's consistent with our budget, but is it consistent with what you see in the market for um, what these items should cost? Very much so. Okay. Um, that's all I got. Thank you. Thank you for, for um, making sure that the town stays on top of this. I've got no other questions. You're welcome. Bill, any questions for Randy? Yeah, Randy, thanks. Also, thanks for being proactive, as Joe said. And I'm just hoping that um, this coming winter was like last winter and we don't have to use it too often. <laughs> I agree. Budget quite a bit. <laughs> I'm hoping that too. Yes, thank you. Um, yeah, and uh, actually, I, I sent Randy uh, a note a little earlier because, um, you know, understanding that we're in kind of tier one and only looking at capital that's required. Um, I understand that if we don't order this now, uh, it may not be in service when we need it. So uh, while it is $164,000, uh, snow removal and sanding and plowing uh, is, is an essential service. And uh, so uh, I appreciated Randy. Uh, Randy, you're getting, uh, getting back to me and answering my questions earlier today. Um, are there any questions from the public on this item? Okay, seeing none, I would accept a motion. I'll uh, make a motion to authorize the town administrator to sign the contract with Minuteman Trucks, Inc. for a 2020 international 7300 dump truck with sander and plow. Any further discussion? Uh, all those in favor, Joe? Aye. Bill? Aye. Mary? Aye. Thank you. And Randy, if you could describe the um, services. Again, you were, you were very helpful in giving some information earlier today. <coughs> I think that may have been forwarded on to my colleagues, but um, if you could please just describe, <coughs> excuse me, this contract um, and how it'll help the town with tree trimming. Sure. This this contract is done again bid out by the MAPC, um, and it's uh, the South Shore contract. And Pathfinder has won it, and it's for trim tree trimming services, basically overall tr uh, tree services. They'll take down trees, they'll stump, 
they'll do do it all. They they'll actually get us a crane if we need it, which we need more often than not lately. Um, in the past, in the past four years, I went back five, but the, in the past four years, we've spent either third from thirty to eighty thousand dollars a year um, with tree tree um, services, mostly removals. Uh, a lot of that has to do with the storms that we've had and the services and emergency services. The emergency services are a little bit more money, um, but I want them to, to be under contract, not knowing what the weather is and it being hurricane season, is that if we have a main hurricane or even a small one, uh, that this, this company will be under uh, contract. In the past, it hasn't been, and we've had to um, go out and call vendors so they would be prepared and, and be ready and would have to pay a premium for that. So I would like to have a contract in place on a regular basis so we can go out and have these services if there's an emergency situation or a weather situation. Thank you. Uh, Joe, any questions? Yes, if, if I can just follow up on that description. Uh, so let's suppose we have a tropical winter uh, and we don't, uh, I'm sorry, wrong, wrong contract, this is the, the tree. This is the tree one. So if we have a situation where we don't need these tree services at all, are we being, will we be billed or is it based on usage? It's based on an as, as needed basis. So if something happens, I call them, we discuss it, they'll look at the job, if, unless it's emergency, and then, then we go from there. And, and we, so only, we only pay what we use. We, we pay what we use with a cap of 200000 Correct. Um, and no, I mean, I've looked at this. I think this is, this is uh, a prudent move for you to make. Again, thank you. Uh, I would just uh, urge you to uh, make sure that the um, insurance provision uh, is uh, honored by the contractor. Make sure that we have a copy of that insurance provision, which names the town as an additional insured. So if anything happens, uh, we've got the uh, right documentation to support us. And that's provided that has, for in the agreement. Yes, that has been done in the past and, and uh, I'll make sure it's updated. Yeah, great. So thank you again. This is, this is just, this is um, an excellent arrangement. Thank you. No other questions. Bill, questions for Randy? I just, I just have a quick question, I just, Randy, on, the, on your methodology for uh, what, you know, what trees to trim and, and this kind of work to do, do you, uh, I know that, you know, the DPW has kind of plans in place to do different parts of the town uh, during certain uh, years and times. Is this service one that comes to your attention through um, requests by mm -hmm. residents or do you have a plan? Are you going to do these trees that overhang this road or that road? I'm just kind of curious how you plan it all out because I know that you do a good job with, um, with how you plan, plan work for the, for the DPW. Well, this primarily is for um, work that we can't really handle. Um, yeah. We do have a tree crew. We are down six people. Um, uh, we do have tree climbers. We do have the equipment. But this is for trees and situations that we can't really handle. They'll bring in a crane. Um, they can lift a tree over a house if necessary, over wires. And that's primarily where we get them is in those situations that it will either take us too long to to do it take days to do the job where they can come in and pick a tree in, in hours and usually what we'll do is we'll have a list of trees that uh, if we do bring in the crane we'll give them a day's work to make sure we we have uh, have them work what they're worth so um, they, they will do tree trimming but we do tree trimming and um, I won't necessarily use them unless it's uh, an urgent situation and we, we don't have the crews to do it. But that service is in there um, along with all the other services that a tree company would do. Great, thank you. And um, I would just add, you know, Randy mentioned that um, he's down six people right now. Um, I think we need to recognize as a board that that's not, that's not sustainable for him and his team. Um, especially given the, the service level demands of the citizens of Hingham. So as uh, 
you know, in, in the not too distant future, I think after we get <laughs> our uh, next month's financials, uh, we as a board may want to be looking at, you know, the open positions in the town and making some decisions because I think when, when, you, when you have a crew that is down to that extent, uh, it puts a lot of strain on the remainder of Randy's team. And I think there are other departments that are experiencing um, similar stress points. So uh, I, I, I would say that in the next couple of weeks, we as a board, with, with the financial information as background, uh, may, may want to take a look at some of that. So, um, uh, Randy, um, I don't have any other questions. Any, any members of the public with a question about this item? Okay, uh, seeing none, Bill, would you want to maybe make a motion on this one? I make a motion to authorize the town administrator to sign the contract with Pathfinder Tree Services, LLC, for tree trimming and removal services through June 30th, 2021. Second. Any further discussion? Uh, all those in favor, Joe? Aye. Bill? Aye. Mary? Aye. Uh, Randy, thank you very much for joining us this evening. Uh, next thank item you. business on the agenda is the COVID-19 update. Thank you, Mary. Um, so uh, as of, uh, while well, Massachusetts remains in phase three, step one at this time, uh, public health indicators in Massachusetts do continue to hold steady. As of today, the Department of Public Health is reporting 123,425 confirmed cases in Massachusetts, of which 9,407 are in Plymouth County. As of last Wednesday, the DPH was reporting 305 COVID-19 cases in Hingham, keeping us in the green or the lower risk category. Uh, this last point I'm gonna make, I think, I just wanna stress it, it you know, we're hearing um, some horror stories across the country as people reopen and, and become more confident uh, I just want to, to stress uh, this last point is that we do need to be uh, remain vigilant in taking precautions to prevent the spread of COVID-19 in our community. So uh, please take those uh, that precaution seriously. I, I, I am with the government, uh, the local government, and I urge all the citizens to do so in their private lives. Thank you. Um, Michelle, did you have anything to add tonight relative to COVID-19 update? Yes, thank you. I have um, an update from the Recreation Department. So Mark Thorell wanted to provide an update on their modified summer programming this year. Overall, the Rec Department was able to serve 1,417 children in various programs over 11 weeks this summer. Um, those programs included the Fun Time Program, the Sports Experience Program, the All-Star Athlete Program, and Dancing Feet. Summer activities included sports, art workshops, dance classes, tennis lessons and activities at the South Shore Country Club, field games and classic theme days like tie-dye day and karaoke day. I like giving these fun reports. <laughs> um, the department also employed 15 counselors to staff the modified summer programs, as well as 10 lifeguards to monitor Bathing Beach seven days a week. Working within the COVID-19 guidelines, Mark and his team worked incredibly hard to put together a creative array of programs to serve children in Hingham this summer. Uh, Mark wanted to give a special thanks to his team members, Kathy Walsh, Mike Bernard, and Jackie Mew for their dedication. They put in many extra hours to do what they could to offer children a fun and safe environment this summer and to provide some normalcy for families in what has been anything but a normal year. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Joe, any questions for Tom or Michelle? Uh, no questions, but uh, a lot of thanks to the work uh, that they've put in and uh, the various departments and, and the schools are, 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 we're all slugging through this uh, COVID situation. So uh, thank you. Bill? I know this is a question, but in addition to uh, uh, the schools, I know that um, uh, new sports have started in town. Uh, the soccer started this last Saturday and uh, football started uh, this evening. So it was good to see everybody wearing masks and following the, um, uh, the relevant protocols on social distancing. So um, encourage everybody to stay vigilant. Great, thank you. Uh, next time of business is public comment. Um, the Hingham Board of Selectmen 
encourages community engagement and welcomes questions and comments as agenda items are discussed at the meeting. Uh, we have set aside up to 15 minutes right now for public comment on items that fall under the purview of the Board of Selectmen but are not already on tonight's agenda. If any guests wish to speak, please seek to be recognized. Once recognized, please state your name and address and address your comments to the chair. Comments will be limited to three minutes per speaker and must relate to topics within the scope of responsibility of the Board of Selectmen. Speakers are encouraged to present their remarks in a respectful manner and not to indulge in personalities. The public comment period is not a time for debate by the Board of Selectmen and the Board of Selectmen is not adopting or endorsing any of the comments made during the public comment period. Uh, is there anyone who wishes to uh, make a comment at this time? Okay, seeing none, I'm gonna to move to the next item of business on our agenda, which are appointments. Um, for those of you who have been watching uh, over the course of our last four or five meetings, the board has been making a series of both appointments and reappointments. And uh, tonight we are going to continue, uh, continue to do so. Um, Bill and Joe, uh, what Sharon has done with respect to our vote list is she has listed all of the committees with that still have open positions. Um, and so, uh, you know, what, what I'd like to do as we, as we walk through this is invite each of us, if, uh, if, if we have candidates to put forward uh, for consideration, what I might just ask is, uh, we have a few committees where we have a few openings. So I would suggest that, um, uh, that we make appointments kind of, you know, one, one candidate at a time. Um, to the extent that we still have openings and don't have appointments to make, um, that, that often happens at this point during the year. Um, if, if we still have open positions, um, my suggestion would be that we send a note to uh, any of the applicants uh, who have not yet been appointed to see whether uh, they might be interested. So uh, I'm going to start with the Zoning Board of Appeals. And I know that we have uh, one opening on the associate member of the Zoning Board of Appeals. Uh, and we also have an opening on the ZBA, although over the past few years, uh, the board has elected not to fill that position and to leverage the associates. Uh, Bill or Joe, would either of you like to make an appointment to the uh, Zoning Board of Appeals? So I would, um, I agree with you that I would urge that we not make an appointment to the Zoning Board, but we make an appointment to the associate, uh, as an associate member to the Zoning Board. And there is, in my understanding, there is not a limit on the number of associates. Uh, okay. So, so uh, this evening, I'd like to uh, nominate Lauren Galvin as an associate member to the Zoning Board of Appeals for a one-year term ending June 30, 2021. Okay. Um, just a, a, point, a question for clarity for my colleagues. Has Ms. Galvin been appointed? Um, am I remembering that yes. she was also yes. appointed to the Tree Preservation Bylaw Committee? She has been. Okay. Kind of Have we just checked with her to make sure that she'd be that she's got the bandwidth to serve on both committees? I have not made that check. So okay. um, I would be happy to withdraw this until I make that call. Uh, Joe, that would be great. I think that way we'll just make sure that, um, that, that she can do that. Terrific. Great. Okay. Okay. Uh, the next committee that we have is the Bear Cove Park Committee. Um, I would actually like to start and um, I would like to make a motion to appoint Karen Trask to the Bear Cove Park Committee for a three-year term ending June 30th, 2023. Um, I would just let my colleagues know that um, I, I actually exchanged some emails with Ms. Trask over the past few days because she had expressed an interest in another committee that was fully staffed. I made her aware of some of the other openings and she was very interested in the Bear Cove Park Committee. So I did, uh, although we didn't speak with her specifically about that potential appointment um, during, during her interview, uh, she has confirmed for me that if, if appointed, 
she would be delighted to serve. I would second the motion. Okay, any further discussion? All those in favor, Joe? Aye. Bill? Aye. Mary? Aye. Uh, would either of my colleagues like to make an appointment to the Bear Cove Park Committee? I, I do not have an appointment. I, I, would, I would like to make one, and if I could hold the third spot for another applicant, that'd be okay too. But tonight I'd like to appoint Michael Shafi to the Bear Cove Park Committee for a three year term ending June 30th, 2023. Uh, I'd second that. Any further discussion? All those in favor, Joe? Aye. Bill? Aye. Mary? Aye. And uh, just as Bill mentioned, we do have uh, one, one opening remaining on the Bear Cove Park Committee. Uh, I, actually, I actually have someone who might who express an interest to in me, but if I, could, I, if, I, if I could have the week, Mary, just to confirm with that person. Um, Absolutely. Okay, thank you. That's great. Yeah, I, you know, I, I always want to make sure at this stage that, um, uh, that, that we've had those conversations uh, so that nobody is, uh, nobody's surprised. Uh, the next, the next item on uh, the next committee on our list is the beautification committee. Uh, I do not have an appointment to that committee at this time, but I would, uh, if either of my colleagues had an appointment, I believe we have two vacancies. I, I do not. I also do not. Okay, so we'll hold on that. Uh, the next committee that we have is the Council on Aging. Uh, we have uh, three, uh, three vacancies on the Council on Aging. Uh, would either of my colleagues wish to um, make, a, make an appointment? Mary, so that is not on my, my vote list. The Council on Aging? The next one I had was the Commission on Disabilities. Um, I had, um, uh, I suggested before the meeting, Joe, and I'm sorry, I sent it right before. Uh, I know we had asked uh, a couple of questions about the, um, the requirements for that committee and reaching out to some of the applicants. And uh, I, I wasn't sure that we had gotten that information. So I was going to recommend tonight that we, um, that we wait on additional appointments to the Commission on Disabilities until we have that information. Okay. Um, so I think the next one down on the vote list is the Council on Aging. Oh, okay, got it. Yep. Um, I would like to make an appoint, I would like to make a motion to appoint Scott Stevenson to the Council on Aging for a three year term ending June 30th, 2023. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor, Joe? Aye. Bill? Aye. Mary? Aye. Uh, I see that Mr. Stevenson is on the line. We'll give him a wave and say welcome and thank you for volunteering. And uh, Absolutely. You do a great job with the Friday morning um, men's coffee and um, uh, we, we look forward to uh, even greater contributions as a member of the Council on Aging. Um, Bill or Joe, did you have any additional appointments to the Council on Aging? I do not. Okay, okay. so we'll still have two openings there. Uh, the next committee that I have listed is the Country Club Management Committee. I, I was um, prepared to uh, nominate uh, Stephen White to the Country Club Management Committee for, to fill an unexpired term ending June 30, 2022. Second, I was going to nominate him as well, Joe. So this is a co-nomination. Yes. I was, I was going to nominate him too, so it's a trifecta. <laughs> okay. <laughs> on, Mr. White. Uh, any further discussion? Uh, all those in favor, Joe? Aye. Bill? Aye. Mary? Aye. Uh, next is the Cultural Council, and we have two vacancies on the Cultural Council. I would like to make a motion to appoint Ellen Stone to the Cultural Council for a three-year term ending June 30th, 2023. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor, Joe? Aye. Bill? Aye. Mary? Aye. Uh, would anyone else like to make 
a, um, an appointment to the Cultural Council. I do not have a, an appointment no. this evening. I, I was also going to appoint Ms. Stone. Yes, me too. <laughs> okay, so we'll have one opening remaining on the Cultural Council. Uh, next is the Development and Industrial Commission. These are five-year terms. Uh, there are two vacancies. Uh, Bill or Joe? I do not have a, uh, an appointment for this evening. Neither do I. Okay, uh, I'm gonna make a motion to appoint Jill Nilsson to the Development and Industrial Commission for a five-year term ending June 30th, 2025. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor, Joe? Aye. Bill? Aye. Mary, aye. And um, Heidi, for, just for the record, I believe it's Nielsen, not Nielsen. Um, next is the Harbor Development Committee, where uh, we currently have three openings. Uh, would either of my colleagues like to make a motion? Be before you go there, just so I have it as Jill N-I-L-S-E-N. -E is that okay. correct? Nielsen. Okay. I can't read my own handwriting. Yes. N-I-L-S-E-N. Okay. Sorry to interrupt. No, thank you. Um, the Harbor Development Committee, uh, Bill or Joe, would either of you like to uh, make an appointment? Let me look at my list. Yes, this is for uh, Harbor Development? Yes. Um, I would uh, make a motion to uh, appoint Peter Brannigan to the Harbor Development Committee for three-year term ending June 30, 2023. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor, Joe? Aye. Bill? Aye. Mary? Aye. Uh, uh, would anyone else like to make an appointment to the Harbor Development Committee at this time? Okay. I'm going to hold off. Uh, I think uh, next week I was sort of curious to see who would be appointed to positions this evening. Uh, I know we still have two positions to fill. Um, then the uh, next we have uh, for the Historic Districts Commission, we have a planning board designee as well as an alternate planning board designee. And we did receive uh, some correspondence from the planning board. Um, would anyone like to make a motion? I do not have a uh, nomination for this evening. Um, yeah, I, 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 I may be incorrect. I thought we already appointed Mrs. Donaldson, uh, Virginia Day's uh, sister to this position. So um, I don't believe so, Bill. I think we got a letter from the planning board. Uh, right yeah, from Mr. Ellis. Yeah. So I would actually make a motion uh, that we um, that we appoint Justin Aborn to the Historic Districts Commission as the planning board designee to fill an unexpired term ending June thirtieth, twenty twenty two. Any further discussion? All those in favor, Joe? Aye. Bill? Aye. Mary? Aye. And then Bill, I think uh, what you, I think you just mentioned that the planning board had recommended um, Ms. Donaldson. Would you like to put that motion forward? I would, Mayor. I don't have her first name on my notes here. I just had Mrs. Donaldson. Um, Mary Ann. Marion, okay. I'd make a motion to appoint Marion Donaldson as the alternate member of the Historic District Commission as a planning board designee for a three-year term ending June 30th, 2023. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Joe? Aye. Bill? Aye. Mary? Aye. Um, the next, uh, the next uh, appointment that we could have this evening is for the Massport Community Advisory Committee. Uh, I do not have a name for, for consideration this evening, but I'd welcome a nomination if either of my colleagues had one. I, uh, I would like to uh, nominate Paul Gannon 
to the Massport Community Advisory Committee for a three-year term ending June 30, 2023. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor, Joe? Aye. Bill? Aye. Mary? Aye. Uh, the next item on our list is the Tree Preservation Study Committee. And Joe, I, I think that uh, you had asked the, uh, a few weeks ago that we uh, hold off on this last appointment, but if you wanted to put a name forward this evening for consideration, uh, Yes, I would uh, move to appoint Rebecca Mullally to the Tree Preservation Study Committee. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor, Joe? Aye. Bill? Aye. Mary? Aye. Okay, and uh, the other one that uh, I didn't see it on the list, but I know it's in our, in our materials. Uh, we have the uh, Preservation Award Evaluation Committee and there are three vacancies. Uh, I, I, I'm not prepared to uh, make an appointment tonight, but if either of my colleagues uh, wish to, uh, be happy to entertain that. I do not have uh, nominations for this evening for that. Okay. I do not have nominations as well. Okay. Um, so uh, this is uh, this is helpful. So. Uh, it, it looks to me as if uh, we have completed all of our appointments except for maybe um, five or six five or six positions. Um, what I might suggest to both of my colleagues uh, is that um, uh, in particular for uh, say the Harbor Development Committee, which still has two openings, um, if there are uh, you know, if we could look back on the candidates, I know there were a few people who had expressed an interest in Harbor development, um, perhaps having a, you know, a follow up conversation to confirm that. Um, and um, appointments are a standard item on our agenda. So when we meet again in two weeks, we can, uh, we can pick this up. Um, I think what I might also suggest uh, after, after we, two weeks from now is that we uh, perhaps ask Sharon at that point to um, publicize the committees that still have openings uh, if there are citizens who are interested in, in filling them. So uh, I think that concludes appointments for this evening. Uh, next item of business on the agenda are selectmen and town administrator reports. Michelle? Nothing for me, Mary, thank you. Tom? Nothing tonight, Mary, thank you. Joe? Nothing this evening. Bill? Yeah, I have, I have two items I'd like to discuss. Um, uh, this past, uh, well, last week, there were 25 Hingham High School students who um, displayed 1,100 U.S. flags on the high school, tur uh, high school field turf in honor of um, those who lost their lives on 9-11. And, um, the 25 students came from a variety of different uh, clubs and sports teams and, and student groups. And it was just a wonderful um, tribute uh, to those who lost their lives on September 11th. And I wanted just to um, point that out that I thought it was just a wonderful, a wonderful gesture that was done uh, last week. And also I wanted to note um, as, the, as the veterans uh, liaison on the board this Friday night at the Harbor uh, from 7 to 8.15. Uh, we will be having our um, annual POW MIA uh, Memorial Standout. Um, and it's a, it's, a, it's a really nice event to honor um, POW MIAs. I think this year we'll, we will be joined by uh, Congressman Stephen Lynch um, as well as members of the Veterans Council and the VFW Legion and other uh, great Americans and a great, great citizens who come out to honor this um, wonderful event. So I plan on attending and hopefully others will as well. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Bill. Uh, I have uh, three things. Uh, first of all, as, um, uh, as part of my liaison responsibilities for utilities, um, I have uh, had conversations with the Cable Advisory Committee 
as well as with Harbor Media because um, a year from now, the town's contract with Harbor Media um, is, is up for renewal. That's a five-year contract. And um, our cable advisory committee and the Harbor Media Board of Directors are, are kind of working through that process. It typically begins uh, about a year in advance and uh, we'll look forward to having you know, productive conversations about that. Uh, tomorrow evening, uh, I will be attending uh, the first uh, Library Board of Trustees meeting uh, since uh, of this fiscal year. Uh, because again, as chair, uh, I, am, uh, I am an ex officio member of, of the library trustees. And then uh, lastly, I, I think maybe Tom mentioned it earlier, but uh, tomorrow is the first day of school for the Hingham Public Schools. And um, I just want to acknowledge the very, very hard work that the school administration, uh, our teachers, our staff, the, um, the advisory committee made up of parents and volunteers and citizens and staff who just worked so hard to allow school to open tomorrow. Um, it will be different. There will be, um, I'm sure, some, uh, some bumps in the road, but I would just echo what uh, Superintendent Austin and School Committee Chair Nee mentioned in a letter to the public which is their hope uh, that uh, together as a community, uh, we can demonstrate grace and partnership as we navigate uh, this very unique educational experience that we're all going to undertake. So we're, uh, we're hoping for a good day tomorrow. Uh, with that, um, at this point, the board will enter into executive session under Massachusetts General Law Chapter 30A Section 21A2 to conduct strategy sessions in preparation for negotiations with non-union personnel and or to conduct contract negotiations with non-union personnel, Fire Chief Steve Murphy. The board will not reconvene in open session. Roll call vote. Joe? Aye. Bill? Mary? Aye. Thank you, everyone. Good night. Thank you.